Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Sanjay and in this video I'm going to share with you five tips, tricks, whatever you want to call them on using Comsec share trading platform. This video is going to be most relevant to you if you're someone who has already used Comsec a few times and you generally know how to buy and sell shares on there all the way through to people who have maybe used Comsec for the last five years and you're pretty advanced on it but maybe you didn't know there were these little tricks within there. Now if you're someone who's never used Comsec to buy and sell shares, you're probably better off checking out one of my other videos which I'll link both above here and at the end of this video where you can actually follow me as I go through a full walkthrough of signing up to Comsec and using Comsec for the first time to buy shares. I think that's going to be more relevant to you. With that being said, let's not waste any time and get straight into it. Okay, so the first tip is the ETF screener. Now a lot of you may not know but there are nearly 170 ETFs that you can buy through the Australian Stock Exchange. And it's difficult to know exactly what you want to buy and it's difficult to know where in one place where you can go through and search for them all. Now Comsec has actually provided this ETF screener which you can find through going to Quotes and Research, Tools and then ETF Screener. And you see this website here where you've got basically the ability to filter on various attributes and if you don't filter you just get all the results as it is now. So if you didn't have any filters, you have 169 ETFs you can pick from. If you ordered them by management costs, you get this idea of these are some of the cheapest ETFs you can pick up in terms of management costs. So say you were looking in here and you wanted to get something with a bit of Asian exposure. You'd click Asia, hit apply filters and it shows you, okay, well there are 16 ETFs that have a bit of Asian exposure in them. And then if you wanted to like you did before, you can order by management cost, by market cap, which is a bit of a proxy for knowing how big the actual fund is. So kind of like how popular is that ETF or year-to-date returns or whatever. Now you should know this is a screener, so it's not really there to give you exactly which ones you should pick and use. It's just the ability to so, sort of go from 100 ETFs down to 16 ETFs. And then you can now go and research each of these to say, okay, which ones am I most interested in, which one aligns with what my investment strategy is. Now the next tip is actually the stock screener which is the tab right next to it. So if you see the ETF screener you just click stock screener there. Now what the stock screener is it's basically the same thing where instead of you just being able to filter on ETFs it actually gives you all the shares that you can buy on the Australian Stock Exchange and lets you basically filter them based on certain attributes that you might want. Now this is probably a slightly advanced thing because you know you need to know what attributes you actually want to filter on. So it may not be for everyone but I just thought I'd throw this in here. Comsec has actually given you some predefined screens along the left which you can use to try and determine which shares that you might want to look into. Again I'll just kind of clarify all these screeners are designed to basically narrow down what selection you should be looking into when you're considering an ETF, an ETF or an individual share. You shouldn't really just make a purchase purely based on the fact that it got screened out and you're like, yes, that's one share that I really want to buy. You should just use it to say, okay, there's about five shares that I now need to do a little bit more research in. So if you look to the predefined screens, you can go growth, value, Say you wanted to get yield, which is like another way of saying you're interested in dividends. It will give you some pre predefined screens. And if you scroll down to here, here's the criteria they use. So they say they look at these certain sectors, they look at certain market caps, and they say the dividend yield has to be greater than 3.5%. And you can see there are 31, 31 companies to look into here. Now if you wanted to get a custom screen, you can click on that. And this is where if you understood a little bit more about you know, individual stocks or individual attributes you look for in stocks. You can click on add criteria. You can say, you know, you wanted earnings per share growth of a certain value, price to book of a certain value, whatever it is. So say you wanted price to book as another filter you wanted to throw in there and you wanted to only look at, say, things that had a price to book of 0.5 to 1.5. Does a bit of searching and then you've taken your res original result from 33 stocks down to just 15 and you can get a bit of an idea there. So again, little point I want to clarify is this is just a screener. It's just help, helping you narrow in on certain stocks but it's up to you then to go and do further research to understand what you should actually consider investing in. Now the next tip is the news and research section. So again, it's usually under, it's one of the tabs along here. So you can see stock screener recommendations, hit news and research. If you don't know how to get to it, 
directly, you can already see on my screen, you basically go to quotes and research, tools, and then news and research. Now, what you can see here is there's a few different filters and bits and pieces, but overall, it's exactly what it says. It's basically news about whatever shares you want to uh, look into. So say you want to look into BHP for a, a little bit, you know, you're old school, you think the miners are still key. You can click on that and you can get Morningstar news articles between this time range. Now, what I think is the most valuable in this section is actually the Goldman Sachs research reports. These are reports that are essentially being done by analysts where their full-time job is basically look at the numbers that are coming out of companies and then make a decision on where they think the company is going and put a bit of a target price on it, just so that their clients, which is usually other companies or other people who are interested in reading these reports, can get a bit of an idea of what are some of the levers associated with value for this company, what could cause this company to go up or down in terms of price, all those kind of things. And they also give some really interesting commentary about some of these companies. So if you said you typed in BHP, Goldman Sachs Research, and you can see they've put out a couple of reports recently. If we look at this recent report where they look at the FY20 results, which would be quite interesting, you'd scroll down, this is a bit of a summary, but you can click on view full report, fires up a bit of a PDF. And now this is actually really valuable because this, I mean, depending on your view on analyst research, but if nothing else, it gives you some insight onto the levers you should be looking at as an individual as to what are the things that can cause this price, share price to go up and down, this company to go up and down. So you can see in this report, they've indicated this is their target price is around $38 and the current price at the time. Okay, so the next tip is the ability to create alerts for share price movements, specific announcements, or when a company goes ex-dividend. So you can find this section by going to watch list, the watch list tab, and then the alerts tab. And you can already see here a couple of alerts I already have, and I'm happy to show them to you. I've got alerts for AFIC, FBR, uh, NIB, Ramsey, VGS. You know, you don't need to know why, but they're there. And I've got various things like stock, when the stock goes ex-dividend, when the price goes below a certain point. So let me go into a bit more detail. Basically, if you go to create and you can type in, say, a company you're interested in. So let's say we're interested in Telstra. We've seen Telstra's wobbled a bit recently and we want to keep a bit of an eye on it. Now, there are different types of alerts you can create. You can create an alert where basically if the price goes above a certain number, it will send you an email or a push notification. You can see the little delivery method here. The other ones you can do is price goes below, the volume goes below, volume of trading goes below or above a certain amount. The market sensitive announcements. So this is where often you'll see an announcement, a little exclamation mark saying, this is quite an important announcement. You should know about this. You know, you may not read about it until days down the track. If you have this on, then basically whenever a market sensitive announcement is made by Telstra onto the Australian Stock Exchange, so this is not media articles, you know, journalists writing this and that. This is when the company officially makes an announcement, which they're technically meant to try and do as, uh, as soon as it's possible to keep investors uh, up to date on various aspects of the company. And you can, again, you can say you want a push notification or an email about this. And so the last alert you can get is basically when a stock goes ex-dividend and it tells you there a little explanation below there. You can choose how many days um, when it's meant to be triggered and essentially it's trying to tell you, hey, uh, before this amount of days, you get a little email or a little push notification saying, this stock's about to go ex-dividend soon. Did you either wanna buy shares so that you make sure you get involved in the dividend payment or get ready to buy shares after it goes ex-dividend because companies tend to drop in value or drop in price immediately after a company goes ex-dividend. So something for you to know. So for example, say you wanted to keep an eye on Telstra, you can see they're wobbling a bit, maybe for a good reason, maybe not. Uh, and say you want to see, you wanted to get alert when it goes below the 52 week range. So say you want to put it in 2.82, cents. create the alert, email or push notification. So the push notification is only relevant if you actually have the Comsec app installed on your phone. If you don't have the Comsec app on your phone, I don't know what's going to happen there. Honestly, you probably just nothing will happen. But obviously hit email so you quickly get an email whenever it occurs, okay? So you do that, then you click add and bang. Now I've got an alert set there for Telstra, done. And then obviously you've got everything else set up. So if you wanted to go back and manage that, 
delete it, you can do all of that as you need to. So pretty straightforward. Now this is actually also something you can get through the Comsec app itself. Okay, so say you're using the Comsec app, quickly log in, and then what you do is you go along the bottom to the More tab down here. Okay, so you go to the More tab on the bottom right, then you go to Alerts, and then you can do, it's pretty much the same thing, you hit plus, and then again, you can choose which company you wanna do an alert for. So let's say now we wanna do an alert for ANZ. Click on ANZ and it's the same idea. What type of alert do you want? Price, volume, market sensitive, stock goes dividend. It's all there, hit create, done. Okay, so the next little hint or slash, hint or tip or whatever you wanna call it, is actually around something I've gotten a couple of questions either through personally, through text messages from friends, or through YouTube, where people are trying to understand what the purchase price is when they look at their portfolio. So what I mean by this is you go to portfolio, you're looking at your account section, and maybe you wanna look at your portfolio and say, let me look at my millions, how's it all looking? And you look here and you've got various things and you see this thing called purchase price. And you have say you've recently purchased some shares and the number that appears on the purchase price of maybe $4, $5, whatever it is, is different from the price that you actually traded at. So you got a contract note from Comsec that said you bought your shares at $4 or you bought your shares at $5 per share and your purchase price number appears differently. What's caused that? Well, this is where it's explained here. Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's actually explained here if you just hover over it, but it's basically where Comsec has actually taken into account all the costs involved in that transaction, where they've basically added the brokerage rate and any taxes you had to pay onto that as well. And then they've redivided it by that number. So generally what will happen is whatever you purchased it at in terms of the price or the, the price per share, the actual purchase number that will appear here will be a little bit higher because Comsec has actually factored in the fact that you had to spend money on brokerage as well. So it's actually, they're actually giving you a more, uh, a more comprehensive, that's the term, they're giving you a more comprehensive view of the costs involved in purchasing that share. So there you go, that's it, very handy. So the next and final tip is some subscriptions that you can actually subscribe to that are com complimentary and basically free. So you get to it by going to portfolio, then offers and apply, and you should be on the subscriptions tab. Now you'll first see promotional material preferences, up to you if you wanna use that. You'll see this thing around the Comsec alert service, which is free. Now you'll already know about that from what I did before. You can subscribe to IPOs and new issues notifications. So you just click subscribe and see how it says complimentary access. That basically means it's free. Hit subscribe. If you want to subscribe to research newsletters where uh, you'll get a bit of a summary of recent news and uh, research that's been published, hit subscribe to that again, free, complimentary aftermarket, close notifications, um, subscribe and whatnot. So anything where it says complimentary usually means it's free, but then whenever it's gonna cost you money, they'll make it very clear for you. So it's actually quite transparent. Well, they'll say, okay, for these are the things that will cost you money, which you can try and subscribe to. And then, um, and there's you know a bit more down here in terms of the premium research from Morningstar. But then most of the things are actually complimentary, meaning they're free. You just have to choose to subscribe to them. It's not on by default, basically. Well, there you go, guys. That's it for today. Hopefully you found that useful in terms of tips and tricks on Comsec. There's a few things that I've picked up along the way. If you have any of your own, feel free to note them below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button and feel free to subscribe for future videos along these lines. I try and do videos around personal finance investing in an Australian context. That's it for today and bye for now.